Here in the subtropics, most coastal habitat that's left undisturbed, um, a lot of it anyway, where mangroves are able to establish, those will be the dominant vegetation that's there. And a lot of the landforms that are here are here because mangroves managed to establish and hold on to the land that was there. So the keys that you'll find out closer to the Mesoamerican Reef, you'll find a large fringe of mangroves and sand behind it, and, and those mangroves are what essentially keeps that key in place. And land builds up behind it, it's able to trap sediment, add a little bit of organic matter to the land that's there. Um, and so that is, that is the coastline that's here in, in Central America and here in Belize. It's incredibly important to Belize. The reef and mangrove marine system together has been estimated to have an economic value between 350 and 550 million US dollars per year. That's goods and services, primarily tourism, coastal um, development, shoreline protection of the coastal properties, and also um, fishing. So those three services, it's, it's just incredible. On top of that, it provides important habitat for wildlife, for birds, for fish, for invertebrates, and um, those help drive things like fisheries and other sorts of ecosystem services that are here in Belize. So, um, well, they're a critical habitat. They've been identified as a critical habitat um, by most of the conservation organizations that are here. Um, the fishers recognize from long-term experience that with the mangroves they get the fish, and they recognize also that you know, the mangroves protect their shoreline and keep it intact for things like hurricanes and tropical storms that come in and threaten you know, the ability of this peninsula to even remain here. Well, there is a, a positive relationship between the presence of mangrove and, and the health of coral close by. I mean, if mangroves are holding down the sediments, they're preventing those sediments from being resuspended in the waves and then settling back on top of the coral. So, so that is an important dynamic there. Um, seagrasses are also very important for that process. As you know, there's a tremendous link, strong link, between healthy mangroves and the health of the reef, um, um, the health of fish populations on the reefs, because so many of the reef fish species actually have their um, juvenile stages in the mangroves. So if we lose the mangroves, we're really affecting the reef that way as well. Mangroves, as far as a land-based habitat, yes, they are, they are probably the most important buffer for that particular dynamic. One of the biggest threats we've been seeing so far to mangroves in Belize has been, I believe, tourism development. You know, uncontrolled coastal development. It's been a lot of resorts, casinos, um, retirement homes, condos, you know, and so that's what we've been seeing as our biggest threats. Uh, just pretty much tourism development has taken over. And um, with that, you can't, you can't seem to find enough shoreline or enough beachfront. And therefore, people are creating their own beachfront. And when they try to do this, their only option is to remove what's naturally there. And what's naturally there is the mangrove forest. Globally, there's been quite a bit of mangrove removal associated with shrimp farming. Um, mangrove has been filled in and the, the ponds have been used to raise shrimp and the mangroves gradually die out from inside those ponds. But here in Belize, that hasn't occurred and, and um, there's been minimal, minimal mangrove removal associated with shrimp farming. So in general, Belize has good mangrove laws. Um, most of the major industries have tried to avoid um, impacting them. and. Um, and really, I think the far at the top of the list is development and tourism. So, so we, we have a pretty good situation here um, in terms of a lot of the stressors that other countries would see. I think it's a, it's a question of, of values and will at this point. What do you value and do you have the will to retain, uh, retain that or keep that? I think education will be important, but at the end of the day, um, it's, it's a classic trade-off, I think, between short-term and long-term value. And so that's where the balance we're trying to strike of saying, okay, well, let's look at the areas that are better suited to development and only develop those areas and not some of the low-lying um, mangrove areas that are important for fisheries, coastal protection, flood control, that sort of thing. The sales that Adrian's discussing, where well, you know, can you get the buck now and sell the piece of land now? 
versus what will this property look like in a hundred years after it's been hit by a hurricane a couple of times and, and you know what what will the value of the natural resources offshore be um, what will the value of this place be when the sea levels come up half a meter or a quarter of a meter or something like that I mean that that discussion is is a discussion that's going on all over the world over a range of issues and and we're finding out right now you know who's who's going to win that debate it's going to take a lot of foresight and a lot of um, a lot of wisdom, I think, to choose the long-range option over the short-range option.